But what is this performance? It is not to be done just once, an assessment. It is important to do this throughout the useful life, science, which is in line with what we talked about previously. If the guy puts what he can leave on the tip of his pencil generating revenue due to poor performance of the performing suboptimally, he begins to change his thinking, right? But it is measuring where it is measuring the sinking of the turbine, it is measuring how far away is it, because there is a load loss, a machine that when it reaches nominal power, you wait for steam pressure to live, wheel bed pressure to remain high also, there in hours, on our list of problems at the time of high pressure when the wheel breaks sometimes it is a symptom in itself, because, now, here we have it, then we promised the people to stay until the end, then, Enrique, we did it as a courtesy so we can get closer, do a case study. I'm even further away from the people who are participating with us have inside the plant or the manager, or someone with some knowledge and has a demand well folks. And making an introduction today to our topic one here about the performance of turbo machines, okay? Good night I'm here again Alex and thank you very, very much for everyone's participation. So we raised a topic on the agenda in this one, that painting that I always bring here, a specialist to stop for us to chat and exchange experiences. So I'm going to stop messing around here and let you have the pleasure of presenting it here to you. Henry, good night. How is everything going well? Good evening, Ronaldo. Good evening, everyone. All good. Okay, that's it. I'm going to talk a little bit about performance to everyone, and before I if you introduce yourself, then you've already let it burn, I would like to thank you in advance. There at your disposal be here and tell the people who are following us there. Enrique is an engineer with a cleaner tube, he'll perform better, right? But we've known each other for a while now, since a stand at a company. Then I think it's even a problem to say more about the name. Former Enrique of these people we had there, at the time I was an intern there, Enrique K was an engineer specialized in the area, and I've never had to work directly with another team. So it was no longer a one-off thing, right? And it's very specific, right? I wasn't really a kid yet. I don't want to call you old, okay? Right. Then that's where the destiny is, and time moved away. We stayed with time apart, and more recently we started getting closer and with some projects, some work, then, anyway. So he he accepted the invitation to have this chat with you. And so now I'm going to stop talking for a bit. And let Enrique talk a little on purpose there. What is our intention? What is today's theme? What does he have there that he presents? Guys, feel free, okay? Beauty? Then, good evening everyone. I thank everyone for being there, for the opportunity to. And today we are going to talk of the topic. As Ronaldo already mentioned the performance of steam turbines. Let's talk a little about the standards that apply to us how to prepare this text. How is it done? tests under what conditions that the plant has, what it is in, what conditions the turbine has to be in also for carrying out the tests, what are the necessary parameters and, and then let's see some examples of calculations and the performance problems that we have observed, that I have already observed in the various analyzes I have carried out throughout my career. Okay. Just for guys, get ahead, maybe already sequence it. If you have any questions, things will be sent in the chat. Then at the end, we're going to take a break to try to clarify some things. Then you can, by sending any observation, any comment, something that if you are pressing, put it here. In a little while we'll take a break and start reading some things. Cool, Enrique. Sorry man. So just a brief presentation. Ronaldo already, already gave a summary I'm a mechanical engineer, I am a turbo brand specialist, I have 25 years of experience in the area, I worked with industrial steam turbines, both in terms of services and the manufacture of new machines. I have experience both here in Brazil and abroad, in Europe, the United States United Machines from generation to generation, and I have also worked with compressor and centrifuge in the service area. So this is a brief summary. I have always worked in an engineering department. I had the opportunity to bring a lot of things from abroad to here, to be able to use it here in Brazil, and a long time ago. This is so we can start manufacturing things, things like that, turbines here in Brazil. So the calculation part was something I had a lot of, Karina because it was something that basically brought me into this universe of turbo machines, especially in terms of steam turbines. So shorten some applicable standards to a German standard. 1943. 
It is used to carry out tasks and steam turbines of the most diverse types of all types of turbines. For us we are, we're going to be more focused here today on industrial machines, okay? And we can look at the scope and application of thermodynamic test acceptance and steam turbines of all types and sizes. There are uniform rules for preparation and conduction faith and analysis of results. Additional deviations must be discussed between supplier and customer to a common agreement and these standards. They are more used and we will see this later. Testing is carried out when the machine is initially purchased after a modification sometimes after maintenance in the machine where it is opened, and finally change from sealing. This things which are common to do, but especially when the machine is new, and the customer has the right to know whether what he purchased was delivered. But there are several considerations to be made that we will talk about throughout the presentation. So how is it done? Already talking a little about what? To check whether the machine is achieving performance that was agreed in the contract, that is, in those steam conditions, intake or exhaust covers, extraction, induction, in short, all temperature, pressure and flow conditions, and the machine is delivering that power in that rotation for which the contract determines the flow rate and flow rate is sufficient, so that it reaches within some margin within some time, some uncertainties too. And when was what I just mentioned? When the machine is immediately after a and from a machine retrofit, you reprocess it. It was common to do this to see if it achieved what was determined, because it was purchased and also after major maintenance. So, what is the purpose of these performance measurement procedures? The data collected aims to calculate steam and power consumption active, both in the case of a machine that drives such a good generator. And if the customer buys a machine that has a flow rate that he needs of a flow rate of 150 hours per hour to reach a power of 50 mega and then when you take the test you discover that 150 is not enough and you need more that's what it's for and it has this test to find out if if what he purchased was actually delivered then compare your guaranteed data with test results to determine the efficiency of the equipment the equipment that is efficient according to the project will deliver what was determined and if it is not there you have to check what happened then you'll make an adjustment then can consider uncertainties and inaccuracies in the instrumentation. The instrumentation has an imprecision, it has a degree, a degree of assertiveness in the readings, and this is inherent to the process. It will never be 100% right. There are stories, it is also related to the positioning of the instruments. This is also considered in the final calculation, which is where we do the correction of test results to warranty conditions. So, for example, steam projects at 500 degrees, but at at the time of the tests, the temperature was 515. This is also considered so that there is no harm to both parties. So here is an example of a temperature correction curve for a given pressure. So we see here and go. The graph starts at 507 degrees and goes up to 567 degrees. And this thing in this correction that is on the y-axis will be applied in final power. It was calculated at the time of test execution. So, for example, if it is 520 degrees or so at this point here, you would have to multiply by approximately 1.015. It means that if there is more energy than the machine needed to carry out this test, and then the conditions of the plant, the measurement points, we recommend that you follow in a flow cart of how this machine is an extraction machine, a machine with induction, a machine with two stations with bleeding, in short, to check which points are required to carry out this measurement, and you will have to have these three instruments the flow meter to check the steam flow to the machine, the temperature gauge, the thermocouple or a screen, the resistor and pressure switch for checking pressure or vacuum. Anyway, a condensing turbine is an important condition. Drains and vents must be closed to stabilize the plant, and the duration of the test between one and two hours, it would be enough to make all the necessary measurements. And here an example of a machine is a machine that actually a part of it where there is the high pressure turbine the medium pressure turbine and here the positioning illustrating instruments that would be important for carrying out also here at the machine's entrance there is a thermometer there is a redundancy here in this case it would be a machine with two inputs or one on the thermometer manometer here and also here in the machine's exhaust plus thermometer and pressure switch is not indicating it's the flow meter it could be integrated into the boiler but what about always?
and there, see that in the medium pressure turbine there is less, more thermometer and more pressure switch. These are the instruments that will give us the information that we need to carry out the calculations afterwards, to determine of the power that the machine will generate in relation to the valves, the valves and flow control. It is recommended that they are 100% open because it reduces the loss due to throttling, and in the passage of steam through the valves may be different. It's not possible, that's where it has to be. There would also have to be an agreement between the customer and the manufacturer. The instrumentation, so, for temperature measurement are thermocouples or thermoresistors. It will depend on the temperature. Normally this choice will be made. Pressure transmitters and orifice plates with pressure pressure measurement for flow measurement. Turbine rotation. A magnetic pickup truck placed on a sprocket is for generators, another for measuring electrical power. The instruments must be calibrated and can even be those of the turbine itself. So, it is often interesting to have a curve like this. This here is a pressure curve of the wheel chamber by intake flow, where we can determine in some conditions the turbine flow as a function of the chamber pressure in the wheel. And why is this important? Because we often find inconsistent measurements of the system flow meter. The piping, especially the measurement of water vapor flow for several reasons. So, this ends up being a trick that we use to have a second flow measurement information. So here, just to be clear, folks, this is where the flow Enrique can't do it here. It's not so readable the right graph tons per hour we have on this axis here. Exactly. And here we have the pressure of the chamber, of the wheel vertically, vertically. And let's go. So, what we're going to do now is see how the calculation of a turbine's power works. Basically, it's what we are observing on the screen. There is a multiplication of two factors of the power measured in Quillam back, and the multiplication of basic flow by non-flow enthalpy variation. Mark is thus kilogram per second is the change of which is what is attempted with that jowl per kilogram. Then the result of this calculation is amazing, man, it's that simple. And even so, it takes a lot of things. Oh why does this happen? Because there is an issue that we will see later on, which is the efficiency of the turbine. All the manufacturer's technology is focused on determining this to obtain a more reliable result, and also obtain greater efficiencies. So, the turbine efficiency and thermodynamic efficiency are the big secret of a steam turbine calculation. And how does the energy issue work? Entropic decay, which is constant entropy in all energy available to the turbine, then it is the maximum. If one, if there were a turbine with 100% efficiency, I would not have any losses during steam expansion. She would, she would have a crush, and then a turbine with efficiency above that would not be possible. What does that mean? A little more technical would be the enthalpy of the vapor, as we gels per kilogram at the exit. Consideration is not the entropy of steam entry, it is exhaust pressure. So then we would have the lowest possible exhaust enthalpy. And then, as there is no turbine that has an efficiency of 100%, the exhaust energy state enthalpy always will be greater than that of the entrance and come out and do well. It's quite complex. Yes, it's personal, perhaps you're not so familiar with it, demand so many people can send it in chat, because this is already very specific and very technical, which is sometimes the people there, right? Guys, you can even comment there what is the function there, is it related, does it know if the themes we are dealing with mentioning it makes sense for people to be able to send it there too and then we put it on the screen right enrique and then i'll give it then give an example to make it a little clearer but it's not like that either it's not to get attached to yourself it's not just to say that there is a maximum power that the turbine can reach and give and this one won't pass or how it is it has that relationship with the entropy of the incoming vapor and the calculation it involves all these theoretical discounts, you put it there, you impute this into the system, and so that it ends, let's say, getting as close as possible to the real condition of the turbine in that for its operational data, and machine efficiency, and it is a business that has a very, very rich science of information. For being behind this, it has a lot of history. There are thousands, hundreds of thousands of turbines, industrial steam engines, perhaps millions manufactured. And then as people test these machines, we receive this information and use it in models in addition. It's something that also impacts the calculation. Could it be the losses? Then there are the mechanical losses, which would be the losses that you say we have for example, in bearings. So, bearing when the rotor, blade, rotating on top of the oil film, 
that produces friction that ends up being compensated by the expansion itself. So this is also considered a loss of both radial bearing as well as axial bearings, which ends up affecting the machine's performance. It is less relevant the smaller the bearings are regarding the size of the share and electrical losses. A generator also has no efficiency. Being perpetual is very close to that, but it also has its efficiency. Just so we can get an idea, right? A reducer is a yield typical of 98%. It's a 97 to 98% generator as well. And then the turbine, there it is, there's something for all tastes. An industrial reaction turbine will have an efficiency of 80-85% in the thermodynamic part, an action turbine of 70 between 75 and 80. And the bigger machines, once from a thermoelectric plant non-industrial, it may already be closer to 90%. They are things, are machines that are sized as a little more, with a need greater to have this efficiency, because the values involved also justify this type of care. Today, here even for an article, taking into account what Ronaldo mentioned and here I will simplify a little what I was saying. Because that's where the turbine's performance comes in, then those 7580, right? It will depend on whether it is an action machine or a reaction machine. Larger machines they tend to be more efficient also for constructive reasons, and the losses are mechanical losses. So, with this here we can get there. Calculate the power of a turbine, then make the most of it. Sometimes the jump such available peak that is, would be what the machine would have 100% efficiency times its thermodynamic efficiency, which is just the expansion of the vapor in the reed even in the diaphragm, minus mechanical and electrical losses. And then we get to the power or the tip of the turbine, or they are on the generator terminals. It will depend on the application of the machine. And here we put an example of what one would look like. Simply put, a calculation of a power hand of a machine at the door of XU, the living steam is 120 bar, 520 degrees Celsius, with a flow rate of 60 tons per hour. Exhaust 12 bar, 240 degrees Celsius. This machine has an available energy of 603 kilograms per kilogram. Its real value, considering this temperature, is 491, which gives the thermodynamic efficiency of 81.4. The losses were estimated at 100 kilowatts, which gives a power generated at the tip of the turbine, approximately 880-80 kilowatts. Is it cool? And then there is a question there close the power and, all you have to do is say a personal thank you and say good night. If you can send it, where are you talking about, right? What company? Who is it? What type of turbine does it have? Have you ever experienced any problems with this? There? The people who are there, have you already followed someone? Any project like this internally? As I said at the beginning of the opening, it is of ebb, which is generally done at plant startup, or when and when some relevant work, some stoppage, is carried out, then some intervention. So, you need to check yourself, right? So, sometimes you have already participated in something like this, had a problem, but anyway, if you have anything and will you send it to us? so we can be able to raise more issues there, right? Cool. That's it. It's the test the interesting test for to protect both the customer and the manufacturer, and this is we want to know if the brand is really delivering what and the manufacturer also wants to know if he didn't deliver what could have happened also, if the same thing cannot happen in other patients. And you, with your experience, have experienced a lot of problems in this regard of having this distrust in relation to what was sold and what was delivered, or, obviously, companies in O and M they already work with a certain safety margin, to avoid exactly so as not to run into problems in this regard. Can Contractual problem, financial problem. But you came to see it was common, no, it wasn't. It usually comes very close what what the manufacturer delivers of what it is receives more eventually, in specific cases, it ends up happening. And this needs to be discussed sometimes with some particularity of that project ends up not being considered, and the performance ends up not going as planned. But it could also be a problem with the plant. For example, you may have a problem that the steam does not reach in those conditions that the machine needs, 
or sometimes the instrumentation itself is not reading properly. It is also important to speak to the generator. It is easier to do this type of analysis because the generator power meter delivers the power that the brand is generating. The compressor no longer has this facility, right? And there, and here comes an interesting thing that I already picked up is the turbocharged make a car that has enough power. Then the compressor guy makes a car that reaches the other power, and sometimes it has nothing to do with it. I understand this is because of the number of variables there are, right? And there are other times is the time you invest to be able to investigate, and companies have to be with the intention of discovering that sometimes you can't understand why you have this discrepancy. And it goes towards the financial part is that if the guy is not operating with the expected performance of the equipment. If we do some quick math, like this, the cost of steam and the little bit of efficiency that is good little compared to the amount he is running. A loss which often makes it possible to easily justify one at minus one notion and an approximate study for him to know in fact if what was expected is being delivered, right? This, this is a big deal, right? Because on the one hand, a test like this requires effort from both parties, both from the manufacturer or consultant and from the client to arrive at information. But on the other hand, it is a turbine that is inefficient, that is consuming, or the suspicion that she is consuming more vapor than she should. It also creates a financial burden for the customer. Why? Because steam has a cost to it, so he will do that calculation. I expect it to be consuming so much steam to produce this power, but I'm consuming 8-10% above that and that ends generating a cost that was not there. I hadn't anticipated it, I can't justify this to my manager, and now what do I do? And that's where the test has to come in to really certify that the problem is either in the turbine or in another piece of equipment. For example, a pipe that is undersized and cannot deliver the steam in the conditions that the turbine needs and she, in turn, it also fails to deliver what it was designed for. So the test is important for this, because you certify or arrive closer to it of the real problem that is occurring. And then we can pass this on to the customer, and he manages to take an action that he can do or he will talk to the manufacturer. Look at the machine and decide to do maintenance not program to see what might be happening. There is also a safety issue with this machine, it is not generating that power. There may be a problem inside it, which could lead to another situation, and causing another problem. So we always have to be aware of this behavior. What is the performance of the machine and is it a good indication how is its maintenance as well? And so, if I could talk a little more about the history, right? We have monitored machines today, for example, which is very evident the guy does this control. He is the guy. He can see there, for example, the indicators that he starts pulling up the history and sees that that machine is, I don't know what it is, it's what it's been presenting. Higher consumption is a trend because in fact he is out of trends and the guy is watching. He wants to see if the machine is working with an unreasonable tendency because eventually you know that performance drops over time. That's it. That's it imagined. And the brands that don't have that much, this one is monitored, the machines are more. But I don't know how I can say, but less attended. How do people usually do this? Is it not very accessible? How does it work? Little of it is a machine. It actually has a degradation in performance over time. That's it. That's just waiting. So you lose a machine, and it's common so have a ceiling budget at the beginning of the operation. And yes, that will end up causing a reduction in machine efficiency. So there are already standardized curves where we can observe this kind of thing. It's even important, right? Because the performance test itself has to be done, if I'm not mistaken, up to six months after the start of lactation. After that he already loses. There is no longer any guarantee that it will perform like new. But you can this is just to check the performance. Now, for a question like equipment maintenance, you are following all the parameters, you are used to it. For example, let's evaluate the station temperature for a compression machine that works with steam overheated faster and a great and efficient parameter. So you have have your machine there, a factory machine that has steam of one and a half kilos of exhaust and superheated 130 degrees. Suddenly some time passed, you'll see it's 135, 
but everything else is the same. Only the valve is a little more open, there's already a clue, let's talk about it, but you already have an indication of a performance problem of this machine, that seems to be already affecting the exhaust temperature. It's a machine here too working with saturated steam, suddenly starts to overheat too. It's a performance problem, a machine that is consuming more vapor can also be a performance problem. This is common to happen, so, a machine too, which requires maintenance, not just the machine, but also what is around it, because the turbine depends on the boiler. Yes, the boiler water is not adequately treated and it starts feeding the turbine with deposits, that sort of thing. It also starts to affect her performance. It is important for him to talk about the turbine, it is inserted in a plant. She is not isolated from this. It will depend on the application of the machine. And here we put an example of what one would look like. Simply put, a calculation of a power hand of a machine at the door of Exu, the living steam is 120 bar, 520 degrees Celsius, with a flow rate of 60 tons per hour. Exhaust 12 bar, 240 degrees Celsius. This machine has an available energy of 603 kilograms per kilogram. Its real value, considering this temperature, is 491, which gives the thermodynamic efficiency of 81.4. The losses were estimated at 100 kilowatts, which gives a power generated at the tip of the turbine, approximately 8880 kilowatts. Is it cool? And then there is a question there close the power and, all you have to do is say a personal thank you and say good night. If you can send it, where are you talking about, right? What company? Who is it? What type of turbine does it have? Have you ever experienced any problems with this? There? The people who are there, have you already followed someone? Any project? like this internally, as I said at the beginning of the opening, it is a web, which is generally done at plant startup, or when and when some relevant work, some stoppage, is carried out, then some intervention, so, you need to check yourself, right? So, sometimes you have already participated in something like this, had a problem, but anyway, if you have anything and will you send it to us, so we can be able to raise more issues there, right? Cool, that's it, it's the test the interesting test for to protect both the customer and the manufacturer, and this is we want to know if the brand is really delivering what and the manufacturer also wants to know if he didn't deliver what could have happened also, if the same thing cannot happen in other patients. And you, with your experience, have experienced a lot of problems in this regard of having this distrust in relation to what was sold and what was delivered, or, obviously, companies and O and M they already work with a certain safety margin, to avoid exactly so as not to run into problems in this regard. Can contractual problem financial problem but you came to see it was common no it wasn't it usually comes very close what what the manufacturer delivers of what it is receives more eventually in specific cases it ends up happening so it's not like you have a combustion engine with a tank on the side throwing gas into the atmosphere turbine is in the middle she is part of a cycle and if there is a problem in this cycle it may be affected so this must always be observed not only the turbine but also adjacent equipment that is operating in conjunction with it, exactly, and then we too, in the end, and already giving away a spoil, we go, 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 let go, then we will try to work together with you, if you have the demand, in fact, we also want to leave the door open, in the sense that it is possible to carry out an analysis preliminary, at least, so we can have an idea about what the real situation of the equipment is, for at least afterwards you are suspicious, as you know, and then we will go into more detail. Then some questions started to arrive, some questions here, some some messages. For example, where are people talking about? What are they? What's up? If people can also send it, what is it? The company? There's something along those lines. But a good question came here, saying that it is very common to attach a penalty a lot in linked contracts. Why did you cut here? For me, take another screen here. But let's go. I have another question I don't know if it's an accurate question. I don't know if he can see it. Oh that too. I see two whole questions. Where the steam that should arrive superheated already reaches the valve's turbine and 
inlet with different temperature and pressure than designed. I think it's a continuation of the first one. He works there at MG. He's the person he is. Even a professional manufacturer. Let me take another link here that was. I wasn't seeing here that I can do better here. Let's go guys from Bioenergy. Aroira, Danilo, Asweli, thanks for being there. Donnie, everyone you're interacting there. You're participating. Marcelo said, it's really cool the instrumentation. Which Enrique said that the instrumentation even exists in Mare. Talking about scouting, if you're going to do something very specific. Specific, it's very careful, right? That the report must be up to date. Can you talk a little about that? Normally we use it like this for performance tests, but more common. People don't even like to use this term performance test, the turbine goes blade, it's not from this equation, it's from 1900, until we do an assessment and see if it's okay. That he is already afraid of making mistakes, it is already a business that can only do so because test performance is very exactly, just like everything is an example of talking about flushing, could it be? I'm going to talk about the flash literally Oscar, and it starts to scare everyone, so I don't want to stay away from this business, test performance he wants to do, he just wants to check. And that's what we're saying is possible, but this is how we do things, Dr. Minor. He is based on the norm and does something following it, but he doesn't follow it, often you don't follow it exactly, please because of the complexity involved, but it accompanies this, that's what ends up happening, right? But the performance test is not to be done just once, an assessment, it is important to do this throughout of the useful life of science. So, with this, you can and it is by monitoring the logical equipment with the help of specialized people and knowing when to intervene. That's because if you extend the useful life of equipment and also achieve lower steam consumption for that application, which is in line with what we said previously, if the guy puts what he can leave on the tip of his pencil generating revenue due to poor performance performing suboptimally, he begins to change his thoughts, right? The question I had was if you can talk the name is not appearing here, it just looks like his nickname here. Good evening, my name is Ah. Uh, sorry Alex showed up here. Alex Daniel I am the energy. This was the one he had sent, because I have seen and heard in some cases, that the people at the plant remove the thermal blankets of the pipes, right, which will also interfere. No, of course. Even in the fee, cooling, insulation, all that stuff. The piping is removed, then you can no longer guarantee the temperature, it is because the temperature will reach the turbine flange. There he says where it should arrive superheated, it's time to go into the tube, temperature, pressure, different from the design. Exactly. And the fight starts, because the guy from the plant says no, but it's not giving the power, man, but then it starts to get there and encounter this type of situation. And you have to see, for example, it's not enough pressure and temperature. Okay. But where are you measuring? No. If you arrive, you won't be getting close, but it is measuring where it is measuring in the turbine flash, is measuring whatever distance it is because there is a load loss. If you have, you are also measuring the pressure, but it. But if you measure 10 meters upstream of the turbine, has a head loss that is not being considered accurate. So that's it, let's go have a little more presentation, and then we pause again to respond. The person will send a question guys, if you could please put it there the function or company, just so we know who is following. The staff level so we know if there will be more for the maintenance or continuous suggestion of new subjects. There, including in the Enrique area, there is some specific demand, is there anything you think would be interesting for us to approach? Here on this topic of performance, performance. Anyway, here we go. We are here to be proactive to try to make things easier, to bring things, content, knowledge and in search of what if we don't know, we'll even who knows about whatever subject is always related to turbines. But that's it, there. So come on, let's get on with the presentation. So we have already seen here in this case, a machine that in these conditions it is generating 80-80 kilowatts at the end of it, and then if there is a reducer, there will be less power in NA, at the exceed port at the output port. If you have the generator and other power, 
because there is also the efficiency of the generator, and if it is the equipment that the machine it activates directly, it is this power that it will see, it will be there, it is the power, already in the turbine coupling, alright then, so now comes the icing on the cake of our presentation, and let's talk about some some problems we encounter with the machine's performance, and what could be causing it, and why it would help possible investigation, and if this is the case, you have experiencing this in your company, the lack of power. So the company bought a turbine from there, and it is already in use, and has a 50 mega turbine. And then this brand, this machine is no longer generating the nominal power. He or she is even generating, but he or she needs to open the valve more, and what could be happening to justify this symptom. So what is it? Typically observes high exhaust temperature. This is only in the case of a counter pressure turbine with superheated steam in the state. Sometimes the vapor is saturated and the air comes out saturated, which is the other condition of the vapor. And this would not be noticed because in a saturated vapor, there is a change in energy without a change in temperature. So you wouldn't notice this symptom, and also an increase in blood pressure, from the bed, wheel and wheel chamber to the first stage of the turbine, be it an action or reaction machine. Almost all machines have this, an action wheel at the entrance. So, when the flow rate increases, that would be the symptom. This pressure will increase, and then you can see that the machine is consuming more steam to generate the same power or sometimes even a lower power, and there is an increase in the steam flow. So it's that flow where about 100 tons per hour of steam needed to generate that 50 mega became 110. There are three common symptoms to be observed in this case here in counter pressure turbine, which explains why they are here, which usually occurs when observing whether the symptom, which is the lack of possible potency causes low efficiency in the turbine, which can cause strangeness. There are a series of factors which cause a loss in the efficiency of a steam turbine. A very common thing is that time off is already compromised, so the manufacturer determines a gap between read and diaphragm read, so always, always radial, read, read and ribbon, labyrinth, rotating read, static read, and this gap has to seal the stage to prevent the steam from pass over the reed. If this clearance is increased above what was determined, the machine will consume more of the color so that more vapor remains, it will go outside the reed, and this will affect the performance, the steam that passes outside the reed above is ending, what you have and don't work on doesn't generate work, then it arrives hotter on the other side, and then ends up causing increase of energy in the machine's exhaust, and giving the labyrinths, which is 1A1, it's an analogous situation, basically you have a degradation in the turbine sealing in the vapor passage region, and can even be in its own sealing of exhaust and take. It wouldn't make so much sense anymore, would it? Because there is more vapor that is not passing into the turbine, it is leaking through the shaft, and then the steam also does not generate work. But it is considered at the time of production, where on the reed, both generation and reaction machines, injector blocks, which are the profiles through which the vapor passes, where it is directed, the static part or diaphragm that has a face, and this wear, which would be like the sea, could be erosion caused by the passage of vapor, a vapor sometimes, which is not in ideal conditions to go to the boiler, and ends up causing this wear and tear. And it also ends up causing an increase in surface roughness that ends too, influencing. The performance of the turbine remains, and then finally, incrustation or corrosion, which is deposits that end up being and up manufacturing in in the passage of steam, that cause a, but it also increases the difficulty of the steam passing through his path causes a restriction. That word catalepsy it also seems like greater pressure than what was designed. It also ends up harming you, steam flow there, this and that, and the solution could be a machine wash, a wash with the machine closed, or some sometimes even a mechanical wash. You don't have to open the machine if you have no other solution. And then remove the internals and do it, it won't. And it usually does it in one stop and in none. Ultimately this would be the solution, but if it's possible and you can do it too, e.g. That's when it starts to make sense. It's not that the guy, for example, does some monitoring there, does an analysis, he comes to the conclusion that he has the problem, it's not high temperature and lack of power, for example.
example, the guy already knows the diagnosis, this is exactly what we are proposing, explaining to the guy already program, schedule an intervention, but he's already gone. I believe that the performance also gives this to the guy, he already goes in the direction of what could be causing this, so he can already predict his intervention. For example, I will need to do sand blisting, Edwin or I don't know what, which way he's going to run. So he can already work on the schedule issue, but these things he can give a lot of elements, be much more assertive in diagnosis. And there can also be a combination of all of this here, right? This means that it is not impossible for you to have a machine that already has vibrations compromised, without erosion or encrustation. Then and then it becomes logical, there is a task there for those who are evaluating how to determine what to do. In the end, this is it, and that would be to give a direction to do something and restore the operating condition of the project machine. Show and take another break here, take some more. But there are leakage problem are also not common to affect the pressure. I think we had already read it, you have to measure it at the outlet of the boiler supply line, and upon arrival of the machine's intake valve. What do you mean about the steam conditions? There's a message from Eric Silva I'm an intern in the area of pipe service engineering, Siemens machines, the content helps a lot. Congratulations, message brigade. Marcelo, there is also the operator with some experience, but in condition analysis, it does not appear that it has no effect on possible vapor contamination. In the performance analysis, it reaches the steam contamination criterion. Can you decipher it? So their performance analysis is not a thing which sometimes ends by itself, right? Then we can make a request, for example, of a water quality check of the boiler. Then yes, and then it is detected that it has a high level of some contaminant. We can come to the conclusion that this or infer that this is affecting the machine's performance. Now, when the machine is open, it will be easier. So what do we do? Take it. Take the deposit and see what it is. It is a salt that is embedded to go determine what the other end does to the boiler. Because there is no point in just coming to the conclusion that you have the problem if you can't solve it either. Yes, so it's frustration. You're unlikely to get it resolved in the turbine. It resolves itself in the boiler. Let's go ahead. Remember, it's almost 1 am here. Are you guys? Today's idea here is to make a neutral start. As you can see, it is a very extensive subject. We go heading towards the final stretch. Is there anything else it's still at the end? So I'll leave some messages. Okay. But the idea was just to give an introduction to the topic, as always, right? And as much as possible we will delve deeper into the subject. Come on. It's here in this image. I don't know. Here you can't see my mouse anymore it's pointed out here in red on us. It is an action machine with a diaphragm. Diaphragms E. There's a labyrinth between the diaphragm and the axis. And at the top of the wheel, there is also a maze. So this machine, because it is action the ceiling of the rotating part, it is not as important important as a reaction machine. But it helps a lot with performance of machines that do not have a sealing action machine, that does not have a seal on, on, on the treatment cover tape. But they also tend to be simpler machines. There are more machines, but they have greater efficiency. Bigger brands usually have them too. In any case, it is at these points that we usually see the problem. Then measure the clearance in these points, both in the static and rotating parts. It also evaluates connecting the tooth profile to the surface. Surface. The tooth has that profile that it designs, which sometimes the machine stop there and the gaps are very tight, a vibration a little more, but more serious, more severe, it ends causing touch, damage the maze, and causes damage in the maze, and then there is nothing left to do, then you have to live with it until you replace it, do maintenance on the machine, then another thing, another thing that is not so common anymore, but it happens, the problem with the steam supply, V so you have a machine here when it reaches power nominal. What do you expect the live steam pressure to maintain? It can happen when the machine is arriving at rated power, the pressure begins to drop. And what does this indicate? The boiler is at its limit, and when will it arrive at rated power, the boiler can no longer maintain the project pressure, and then it starts to fall. So it means that the possible design problem in the plant itself here, and decided to buy a boiler at the limit to supply steam to the turbine or even took advantage of a boiler, which was no longer adequately sized by another turbine, that would need a greater flow. So, this type of problem also does not reach the quantity of steam that the machine needs, at that pressure and temperature that it works, can also result in a bad lack of power. 
Ultimately, in the turbine, which sometimes causes problems for the turbine due to a channel. I already said it before here in the presentation, the turbine is part of a process, so we first have to determine where the problem is in order to act. And then a very high counter pressure, well, counter pressure, and in a turbine of counter pressure, it is not determined by the turbine. This is the client's process that works under a certain pressure, and there are load losses involved in the process, which will and will be acting depending on the diameter of the population, the speed, the size of the pipe. Sometimes the pipe is huge, is hundreds of meters, there will be a greater loss of pressure. The client wants to work with a line that is a little more robust, a little thinner, a slightly smaller caliber, gradually increasing speed. This can also increase the pressure loss, and then there is a higher pressure high in the turbine, in its exhaust, at high powers, and it ends. This higher pressure can sometimes harm the machine's performance. If this wasn't because the brand didn't scale for that situation, then the manufacturer needs to have this information. What is the brand's counter pressure? If it is higher, it could also cause a problem with a lack of power. The brand simply cannot compensate. But it's important for us to have this vision, because sometimes it's not so clear on the purchase. Pressure is not determined by the turbine, it is the customer's process. So the turbine is sometimes considered a pressure reducing valve on the side. We have a boiler the other way which is the process in the middle we have the turbine reducing pressure and generating power as well. And now condensation problem and performance issues with condensation issues. And it's a science in itself. There are a lot of things that we can talk about quickly here, so as not to provide more information than we have already seen. Today is enough. So no vacuum problem, we will see a diagram of a good condensation system later. And then there are the injectors, there have to be capacitors and sometimes there may be a problem with one or the other, or even with the main capacitor. And if there is a problem with the vacuum, what happens? The pressure increases, so it gets closer to the atmosphere, which also means, again, less energy for the turbine. And she has to open her valve more to compensate for this, hence possible causes. Then thermal exchange of the surface condenser and the condenser wakes up this system, it is referred refrigerated normally, isn't it? There are some that are shaped differently and have cold water, return water. The temperature differential expected to be around 10 degrees Celsius. If you haven't reached this difference, do you have a problem with this exchange? Or sometimes even the inlet temperature of the cooling water is also not the one that was determined in the capacitor design. It can can cause a problem in the vacuum. The pressure increases, it is closer to the atmosphere, and impairs the turbine's performance. The turbine, which is that vacuum down there, is closer from absolute zero, and then there is more energy available to it, she can work more freely. An undersized or operating problem vacuum system, whatever the reason, it will demand more from the turbine. Another cause of the problem is not entirely. It's because I can't suck the ejector. What does he do? It sucks the vapor causes the vacuum, then the vacuum itself, with the operation of the turbine itself, the discharge itself of steam through the condenser, already puts a vacuum in it. He maintains himself somehow. This afternoon it will take the air out. What he failed to condense is, but if it's not pulsing, I couldn't get it out. Sometimes there is an air intake in the exhaust part of the turbine, and you don't remove it. This hot air, this air that stays in the condenser, it disturbs the of the vacuum system, and also ends up harming leading to a loss of performance of the set as a whole. If we analyze sometimes the turbine is not the problem either. Problem with the vacuum system, yes, and the turbine does as we say, it is part of the system. Do you have any problems with the system? It affects power generation which ultimately that's what we want is for it not to produce that power for which it was designed. And in operation. Which injectors are in operation? Does a common vacuum system have a starting and operating ejector? And the operating injector Injectors. He is the starting manager and he produces a rougher vacuum. It serves to provide faster air removal of the system, and then, during operation, it operates with the work injectors, which are smaller 
which only remove some gases that have not condensed. So they left the starter ejector. It cannot be in operation when the machine is in steady state. It's only halfway through, and that's why it has that name, and nothing happens. We sometimes see customers who don't know this, whatever. Starter ejector in normal operation and the machine is ironic, an injector with more capacity will not provide power. Why? Because the vacuum, the vacuum system is not sized for that equipment to operate. And then we see a diagram on our left there the condenser, then underneath it. Not after the darkest label it's a hot box, which is where the condensate stays. And that what is produced in the chapter above is condensed. And then we have a group of actors that eliminate gases throughout the system, taking advantage of the opportunity. And whoever wants to know a little more about this capacitor parts and such, we had a drunken party with Alvaro Salazar. Check out the channel there, just talk about it. So we go into a lot of detail on the injectors, the service starters, all part of the capacitor. So check it out if it takes more than 1H00 she's just talking about the subject, if I'm not mistaken, that figure there is from training there, so, that's okay, he can, flow card of a very simplified condensing turbine. But basically this is a ranking cycle, a vapor of high pressure, high temperature from the boiler goes to the turbine, expands, then it arrives in a vacuum. Then in the condensation system, it condenses nothing under vacuum. Then we see their thermal exchange. The system is a separate system, it has no contact with the steam, it leaves the turbine, cold water enters, hot water comes out, the steam enters saturated with very little condensate. Coming out of the turbine, it comes out 100%, turns on and is then repressed back to boiler. So this is a typical system of a scheme simplified form of a condensing machine. It no longer works with the boiler and the condenser, there is also high pressure from the wheel layer. Also on our list of problems in wheel chamber high pressure is sometimes a symptom in itself. Why? Because there may be encrustation in the machine that it would be a problem with the boiler, which ended up affecting the turbine, which causes a restriction in the passage of steam. And this restriction had a steam passage area which ended up being reduced. Then, for that same steam flow, there will be a higher pressure, and this will also end up making it difficult, causing a reduction in machine performance. We can observe this in the chamber pressure graph. The wheel must have a certain flow for a certain pressure on the wheel bed, call, sing. With this problem for that same pressure, there will be a flow, and it is because there the cause and effect reverse the area is restricted, and ends up causing this effect. Then the graph is no longer valid and let the over end, this is the. We then finalize the content of the web, which is whoever has more questions we go, go, talk a little bit here and leave just a few more messages here. Most of the people are very active in their participation. Thank you C, Moore is adding comments. He is an operator with some experience, but he is very purposeful. Bring a day here to talk to us. He's talking more about the analyses, already talking. But he said which in the boiler achieves connection via operation and dosing of chemicals, water treatment, but in the turbine machine, in this case, it becomes difficult, especially when the silica already serves as sediment. Then you have to do the blasting process, there's not much to do anyway. And then he also speaks. When we talked about the boiler, which is always at the limit of its operation. He spoke here, he left it noted that they usually enlarge the plant and forget about the boiler, it doesn't change the boiler's capacity. And then it also talks about vacuum pressure, such and such. And now, here we have it, then we promise everyone to stay there until the end, right? Enrique we did it as a courtesy so we could get closer, do a case study. I'm even further away from the people who are participating with us inside the plant, or the manager, or someone with some knowledge, and has a demand to do something in this sense, some preliminary analysis, right? That we won't go, right? The intention is not to reach the read, the comma, right? But it's about giving people an idea of what they're doing, what the project is like, what operational capacity it has and how it is today, and compare this to see if it makes sense a more detailed analysis, so we will make Make it available there, right? And it would even be interesting if it could. Maybe we could go into detail, we could publicize this for us to maybe make this into new, specific content, right? Showing, going into a little more detail. Besides what we're doing here, maybe show it right there, highlight, elucidate the time, the data, a specific case. That
that was the demand, that was the data. We arrived. This is not consistent with the application, is it? It's leaving something to be desired. And then eventually, in the future, go after what was proposed, what was done, see what improved. Anyway, we wanted to leave the door open in the sense, right? I agree on Rike. That's it. More. So we have this thing, this project that is open for for anyone who has this demand to carry out an analysis. It would be an analysis like that. It wouldn't be very accurate anymore, but we can get some information at least to give you some guidance on what to do, right? If I talked about isolating the problem, if there is a doubt, we can isolate the problem is to be able to guide the customer in this way, but contact the manufacturer, call technical assistance and take a look at the boiler, because the boiler is not serving the turbine. I'll take a look at the process there because the load loss is very high, and is the pressure reaching the turbine scale, or is it the vacuum problem? Anyway, and we almost have this machine courtesy of this, we will be able to provide support to those who are watching. This is the well-accepted case. And then it is also available to get in touch, and we will help. Let's do what we can, right? We will need some information, of course, to be able to make the assessment, but nothing that is not common to be delivered in the package that it is a turbine, a compressor generator. It really gives a bad idea. So we don't know yet if this video that we're going to, at first we will restrict it to the idea and start doing something like that to bring people closer. You won't be saved, okay? But then there's the email, so it's logical it's clear that we're going to do this on a small scale, so whoever is interested can get in touch. There's the email, it says here that you watched it and so on, that we go, we get closer and we go, we establish the steps. Okay, Oziel is sending it there that he liked it. So that's it folks, again, right? Let me see if there are any more questions. I think whoever had to send it already sent it. As I said, the idea was to make it closed, more restricted. And then that's it. Once again, thank Enrique for his availability. Thank all of you to be present here with us. And that's it Enrique. I don't know if you want to make some final considerations. That's cool. Man, I really liked it. It's not a subject I talked about. That's what brought me to this world, which was a brand a long time ago, and I really like talking about it, so I like to help who has to feel this need. I'm open, so just get in touch, then you have the email from that, and then I'm available if you want to ask any questions and feel free. So get in touch guys, and we'll go, as always, we're here to help, we're there to help to lend a helping hand, a direction that we don't know. We go after it, taking advantage of the network's relationships. It's Henry, they sent me a message here, I'm going to share it here with Enrique, so he can get it. Congratulations on the content, it is difficult to know the content and pass it on in a simple and explanatory way. Great work from you, credit to Enrique, who was the one who spoke who gave us this is who gave us this opportunity. I'm just here to be the spokesperson, okay? So I'm very sincere and the idea it's exactly about talking less and listening more. Beauty, beauty. So it's so personal, huge everyone. Thanks Enrique, thank you. Good evening to everyone. Thanks to everyone there. A full hug, that's it. Good night, good rest to everyone there. E, have a great weekend, ha. Huh. Thanks Henry. Thanks man, thanks and more. And so we finish another turbo and vap webiner. Thank you for your participation, for your patience, for your attention, by the audience. Leave any questions, comments, suggestions, criticisms, compliments. Send us more suggestions on topics for us to bring up. Is there anyone to recommend to come here and participate with us and bring content? Take the message forward. Just get in touch. Thank you. A hug and see you in the next video. He was. Um abraço e até o próximo vídeo. Fui!